young American, proud, vigorous, undaunted, is hard at work and at play, going forward in every field of endeavor in the face of changing world conditions, which a short decade ago, the youth of that generation faced. Uncle Sam must be pretty fond of these nephews of his, that vast army of youngsters who, by their respect for the past of America and their love for the present of America, are ensuring the future of America. Today, youth, your son and mine, and the son of the neighbor sitting next to you, youth is looking in a new direction, not only onward, but upward into the sky. It is their empire, this world above the earth, and it is in their hands to make of it a force not only for progress and for peace, but for security, which is the parent of progress and peace. One of these days, I'm going to be up there, Pa. Takes more than just wishing, don't it, son? Uh, sure, you got to go after it. The Navy's got training bases all over the country. Hey, but you're a farmer, not a flyer. You've got no experience. You don't need any. Just need two of college and a knack for flying. It's easy as all then? Well, no, they put you through a pretty tough exam. Then what? Then you get a course in basic training. If you've got the stuff and finished the course, you get active duty with the fleet. Mm, that sounds pretty good. And you're stuck on it, eh? Mm, that's right, Pa. Then you go right ahead and put in your application. Well, I already have. and largest air training school for the Navy and the Marine Corps. Although aviation is comparatively young, Pensacola is rich in tradition. Its history as a Navy base dates back more than a century. years ago, the men of Pensacola started training pilots for you. Today, Pensacola is growing faster than Iowa corn and offers the most comprehensive basic air course in this country or any other. The swarm of activity on the ground, the swarm of planes in the air, a visible assurance that the feathers on the wings of your Navy and the Marine Corps are growing brighter each day. It is something you should be glad of at the moment. toward your cadets can be expressed in two words, informality, individuality. These lads are no machines coming off a hasty assembly line. Each one is an individual with a particular personality and special abilities. The best qualities in each are encouraged. The weakness is bolstered by as fine and expert a group of instructors as ever gathered under a blue sky. The slam-bang mail order school of instruction may be in force in other hemispheres, but in your Navy, each cadet is, well, he answers to a name and not a number. Amongst your cadets are all races and creeds from all sections of the country. They are housed in no tar paper lean-tos, but in bright, airy barracks. Then they dig into a short but fascinating course in ground school, practical instruction in flying subjects only, Aviation structure and power, communication, photography, navigation, and aerology. There's not a man in the Navy who's ever forgotten his first trick at the catapult. It's really quite a send-off, quicker than a cat wink, from a standing start to 70 miles an hour within 50 feet. This early introduction to the catapult is of great value to flyers who will use it later aboard quickly when split seconds count. No, these cadets aren't being boxed for shipment back home because they flunked. As a matter of fact, they're among the best of the lads you've sent to the service, having reached an advanced point in their training. They've had plenty of hours in the air. Now they're on the ground, in linked trainers, learning the basics of blind flying. Let us assume the man in this mock-up is flying in thick fog. No landmarks are visible to him. 
cleverly trained to use instruments, navigating by radio, he sails confidently ahead, although the weather is choppy and black as a villain's heart. <laughs> the soup into the clear, although he's theoretically been flying in weather when even the birds walk. It's this type of specialized instruction which makes these flyers, your flyers, actually part of the machines they are mastering. Firing accurately at a moving object from a moving object is not exactly a cinch. Hence, your pilots take a turn not only at the machine gun and pistol range, but also at skeet shooting. Excellent training for drawing a bead on a leading target. In a mock-up of a fighting ship, fixed gunnery is taught. The objective is attacked by pointing the nose of the plane at it, lining it up in the bore sight, then firing. and no play, as the saying goes, makes Jack Tarr a dull boy. Hence the work days are reasonably short, the weekends long, and there's always a pleasant respite from the intense activity which is crowded into a typical Navy day. Like the proverbial sailor who takes his best girl rowing on his day off, young Navy flyers in their spare time seem to keep close to the water, swimming, sailing, fishing, or perhaps a refreshing afternoon at the officer's club. Well, let's get back to work. A few final pointers from the instructor, and your fledglings go aloft for an exciting sleeve target session. The target is flown into the air and serves as the enemy ship. The idea, of course, is for the home team to blast it out of the air. The target can't fight back, but the sole objectives here are to teach accuracy and maneuverability in the air. It is a highly important event, being the cadet's first taste of real aerobatics and simulated combat. Attack over, the men drop down to count the score. The sleeve now looks like an oblong Swiss cheese, fairly convincing proof that your young airmen have not only the wings of eagles, but the eyes as well. Days, weeks, months, patient instructors, eager cadets, flying high, wide, and handsome. Sure, a few fall by the wayside, but to those who qualify come wings, wings of the Navy. The diamond is emerging from the rough. We don't rush them through. They got to be good. Fly them right, fly them fast. Thumbs up, young America is going places. Yes, young America is going places. Qualified pilots are sent forth to operating units of the fleet where training continues under actual conditions at sea. First year incipient flyers take a sightseeing tour around the base. And they're invariably impressed with the tremendous amount of groundwork done in their behalf. Grateful too, for this is insurance that equipment is in top shape at all times. Every 90 days, every plane on the field goes through the shops for a thorough inspection and overhaul. It's the men on the ground who keep those planes air. A combination of traffic cop, watchdog, and guardian angel. That's the operations department, heartbeat of the station. Newly arrived flyers note with satisfaction how well they're protected against the trickery of fickle weather. 
warned of a heavy overcast hundreds of miles away or a change in wind direction a hundred feet away, safeguarded every split second by the expert use of every competent device available. Another job of this outfit is to regulate a smooth, precise flow of traffic with scores of planes hovering around the field. This is a tough hitch, but operations never misses a trick. Did we say operations never misses a trick? That still goes, for this is a make-believe crackup to keep flyers and the ground crew on the alert for any emergency. This scene is actual. A plane was deliberately nosed over and the crash siren sounded. Every man Jack concerned responded on the double. It's another example of the solid fact that no angle, not a single solitary one, is overlooked in the highly geared activity of your Navy flyers. The parachute is used by the Navy chiefly as an emergency operation, rarely as a tactical measure. Parachute jumping is more a function of the Army, which, by the way, many years ago, successfully introduced mass landings of parachute troops and equipment. Nonetheless, to the Navy, the parachute is indispensable safety equipment. This officer has one of the most painstaking jobs in the service, teaching pilots how to land correctly within the confined area of an airplane carrier's deck. A section of a field is laid out to simulate the deck, and the signal man coaches each man individually as he drops down to make his landing. It's plenty tough to set down on a carrier, even under ideal conditions. Hence, this constant repetition of practice landings, so that each flyer will be not only experienced, but expert at this task under actual conditions at sea. Out to sea goes the carrier, a sort of floating eagle's nest waiting for its fledglings to come home to roost. Carrier operations is one of the final phases in the Naval Flyer's training, and this is his chance to spread his wings. He comes flying in as the word goes out, all planes to join the ship at once. It's rather ticklish dropping down on what looks like nothing more than a postage stamp when viewed from above, but the lads seem to have it down pat. As the carrier speeds on, the ship's officers get ready to give the new pilots aboard some real flight action. Flight quarters, flight quarters. Below decks, the men gather for instructions. Listen intently as the battle plan is graphically explained. Fighting planes are to proceed out to sea to attack an enemy ship. Bombers are to proceed inland to storm another objective. As the men go up on deck, there's both anticipation and determination in their manner, for this is the test. The enemy is fictitious, but the maneuvers, the instruments, the objectives are real. There's heavy activity on the top side as the fighters are the first to shove off. quickly follow suit and proceed landward, and they proceed with complete confidence, for this so-called new tactic of dive bombing has been standard training in your Navy for more than 10 years. As they near their objective, the young pilots steady to the attack, gird themselves for the roaring thrill of a 500 mile an hour power dive.
while there's more action aloft, as the tough little fighting buzz saws test their accuracy by bombing a floating target which has been towed out to sea. The young pilots exhibit ample evidence that they've been trained to the minute as they prepare to peel off and provide a few uncomfortable moments for their mythical adversary. refined product after exciting weeks of maneuvers, cruises, and battle practice. No overnight instruction put wings on these boys. They made it the hard way, the right way, the Navy way. And so for them, it's anchors away. Off with the Navy to see the world, from a ringside seat on a nice fluffy cloud to patrol the shores of our overseas possession, as well as continental America, from the fabulous skyline of little old New York to the glittering Golden Gate of San Francisco, then perhaps a trek to the towering beauty which is the Alaska Territory, or south to the soft rolling hills of the Mexican border. Yes, they get around these in your fleet to the far off Philippines, the Hawaiian Islands, man-made canal of Panama, and the whispering isles of the South Seas, to the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, a mighty defensive arm on a 24-hour, 365-day watch. and his ships and planes are manned by your son and mine and the son of the neighbor sitting next to you. And we thought you'd like to know how they're doing, what they're doing. They're doing all right. So here's to them, every Tom, Dick, and Harry of them, afloat or aloft, their gilt-edged assurance that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness will continue to do business at the same old stand within the boundaries of these glorious United States of America. Thank you.